What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about a newer theatrical release, Ambulance. Before we begin, let me know in the comments what your thoughts on this movie were, if you already saw it, or if you were planning on seeing it, and make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my content out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more movie related content like action movie reviews on a near daily basis. But let's not waste any more time and let's talk about Ambulance. This stars Jake Gyllenhaal and Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, who are two robbers, as well as adopted brothers, who steal $32 million from a Los Angeles bank. However, when their getaway goes spectacularly wrong, the desperate thieves hijack an ambulance that's carrying a severely wounded cop and an EMT worker played by Isaac Gonzalez. Michael Bay is back with his 15th film behind the camera, and it was just released in theaters. Now, I gotta be honest, when it comes to Michael Bay, I am honestly not that big of a fan. I like The Rock as well as Pain and Gain, but everything else from him, I think it all ranges from just all right to downright aggravating, and I gave up on his Transformers movies after like the third one. I know some people really like Armageddon as well, but I find that kind of corny to be honest. I appreciate he brings a lot of style and a lot of visual flair to each of his films, and that does bring some sense of fun. But it only goes so far if you don't have much in terms of story or characters. It doesn't even need to be the most complex stuff or anything, it just needs to be something so that we're given a compelling reason to care about all the moments with the visual flair, especially depending on the tone the film is going for. But I feel we rarely get that from his movies, and I generally don't find myself particularly excited for whatever he has up next. However, with this, the main thing I've heard from just about everyone who saw it is that this is his best film in years, and it's a return to form from him, with some people even calling it great. Not that that had me particularly very excited, as someone who wasn't a huge fan of his to begin with. However, if I was able to at least get some good mileage fun out of it, then I'm all on board, especially as I do like both Jake Gyllenhaal and Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. And now that I've seen it, for me, the result was that I found this to be just another one of his films that I thought was alright. Now, it's better than a lot of his most recent efforts, for sure. It definitely feels like something akin to his efforts from the 90s, and it can serve as some mindless fun at times, like with a plot about an ambulance on the move getting chased continuously down the highway, you get mostly what you expect. And there are some fun moments where this chase is in high gear and we get all the usual destruction and carnage that Bay's known for, as the two brothers go through great lengths to evade capture. And when it goes all in on the destruction, it might be loud and in your face and it can feel a little senseless sometimes, but with all of Bay's visual style added in, especially with the constant drone shots, it does make it fun at times. It can sometimes feel like an all-out assault on your senses, similar to Bay's other films, but when it works, it is fun, and it was especially cool to see on the big screen. And the cast also adds to the fun as well. This sees Jake Gyllenhaal play into a persona he's been doing for the past few years where he's almost totally unhinged, almost to like Nick Cage levels. When someone gets in his way or when he gets into an argument, he goes from 0 to 100 immediately, flipping out and flying into a rage. And whenever he does that, I quite enjoy that, as it was a scene-chewing performance that gave the film a good sense of fun. I also liked Yaya Abdul-Mateen, who acts as one of the two biggest emotional cores of the film, as he gets dragged into this robbery at the last second by Gyllenhaal. And despite having a wife and a kid, and he kinda has things put together, he's also in desperate need of money, so he reluctantly goes along with it, and he tries to act as a voice of reason as things proceed, even when he has a momentary lapse in judgment himself. His arc isn't anything we haven't seen before, but it works. And Isaac Gonzalez makes for a nice counterbalance to all the bickering and arguing that ensues between the brothers, as she's the most moral of the group and the one just focused on getting her job done while being held hostage by the two robbers, though she does form something of a rapport with Mateen's character. Where they ultimately take her character, again, it hits a lot of familiar beats, but it's solid for what it is, and I enjoyed her performance, and all three leads had solid enough chemistry with one another. But while I still found this to be fun enough overall for all the action and the cast, where it ultimately stumbles for me, and why I couldn't call it great, is that it has pretty severe logic gaps, even as it tries to serve us some mindless entertainment. Now, the problem is this. I'm always down for some ridiculous, goofy, over-the-top entertainment. Some of my favorite movies fall into that category. However, those movies also know what they are and openly embrace it. They stay in the lane of being goofy and ridiculous, and we enjoy these characters because of their vibrant personalities. But if you're going to present your story as being serious at its core, 
it's going to be hard to forgive when it starts heading into cartoonish territory, and that's ultimately what held me back from loving this. This tries to have its cake and eat it too. One minute you have all this destruction and carnage and over the top screaming and yelling that's kind of meant to be funny, but then the next, we're supposed to get this backstory about this rift between the brothers and their relationship with their father who has since passed away, and we get all this heavy handed super serious drama that's supposed to have some level of emotion to it, and it's not like the film just touched upon the drama to give us the bare minimum of what we needed so that it can then get back to the over the top stuff. We circle back to that drama a lot. So at its core, it becomes abundantly clear this is something we're supposed to take seriously. And because this is something we're meant to take seriously, it's not necessarily asking you to just go with it. You're not supposed to stretch your suspension of disbelief that much because it's meant to still be a grounded story, albeit one filled with a lot of destruction and mayhem. And as a result, I just couldn't get over some of the decisions made here. I'd probably be in disbelief of some of the things done here, even if this went for an all-out goofy tone, but then it would at least be a little forgivable. Here, it's bothersome when you're meant to take the movie completely seriously. And there are just a lot of contrivances here that basically force everything into action, as well as to keep things going for much, much longer than they needed to. Probably the main one for me is the fact that it's revealed about halfway through that Jake Gyllenhaal is this world-class criminal who's on the FBI's most wanted list. Like, the guy's supposed to be a top-notch expert and one of the most dangerous people in the country. But not only does he lead this robbery with absolutely no face covering or anything, considering he'd be easy to recognize, but he also assembles quite possibly the dumbest group of people to handle this robbery as well, besides his brother, who just so happens to join at the last second. But had Yahya Abdul-Mateen not shown up just as they were getting ready to leave, which in and of itself is kind of silly, but had he not been there, that robbery would have gone even worse than it already did. Because outside of the two brothers, everyone dies pretty quickly once things get botched, which makes no sense for someone who's supposed to be this masterclass expert. On top of the fact that, he hadn't even been captured already before the main events kick in, despite the fact that he has this huge house in LA and runs this thriving business. The fact he went undetected for as long as he did makes no sense to me. And then once things get going, some of the sequences that were meant to be this huge moment of tension were just moments I could not buy whatsoever. Like I said, when we get all the moments of mayhem with the destruction going on, those were fun. But again, Going back to the fact this was something we were meant to take seriously, there were several pivotal moments that just pushed things way too much into absurdity. The biggest thing being when the cop is in the ambulance and he's starting to bleed out and he's about to die and they need to perform an emergency surgery. So Isaac Gonzalez's character, who's an EMT and not a surgeon, has to FaceTime her doctor ex-boyfriend who also puts on two other surgeons who are at a golf course on the FaceTime and they guide Gonzalez and Yaya Abdul-Mateen through this emergency surgery while this ambulance is going at least 60 miles an hour where everything's shaking around and it's so easy for your hand to slip. And then not only does this surgery work pretty quickly, but the ultimate moment where they pull it off is when they need to close one of the wounds and she simply takes a hair clip and closes it up, and he's all better. Okay, probably one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. Like I said, had this just taken on an outright silly, self-aware tone right out of the gate, I'd forgive that and laugh at how silly it is and still had a good time with it. But considering this was a movie that wanted us to completely believe all this could happen, and considering how straight-faced everyone plays it in the sequence, I just couldn't buy it. So I was laughing at it, but not for the right reason. And while I still had an overall fun enough time with the movie, this was the moment where it started to lose me just a bit. And going back again to the serious tone, when it goes all in on the drama, it felt super heavy handed and kind of corny, especially once we get into the final act. But what made it even weirder in general is just you really weren't sure how to characterize these brothers, primarily Gyllenhaal. Like, I get Mateen makes a few mistakes, but he's ultimately not a bad person. But some of the decisions Gyllenhaal makes, it's kind of established he's a pretty terrible guy. Yet when we start getting into this backstory with him and his brother and what they mean to each other and how their father was to them and there's this other subplot involving a friendship Jill and all once had with this FBI negotiator that's trying to stop them. For Matina it was one thing, but with Jill and Hall, who's kind of established to really be more of our antagonist, it was kind of difficult to really buy that he's this misunderstood person. And I just found it odd that we get so many heavy-handed attempts of emotion for someone I don't think we're really supposed to like. I mean, I get wanting a well-rounded villain, but 
this movie kept pulling us in like two different directions with this character and I found it just off-putting. Also, I understand if they were to have gotten caught quickly, the movie's over, but the level of effort put by everyone chasing this ambulance felt close to minimal. There were several sequences where it didn't even look like the ambulance itself was going too fast and all the cars behind it were just cruising at the speed limit behind it. Because the whole idea was that, since there was a cop who was shot inside the ambulance, they didn't want to do anything that could potentially cause him to get hurt or killed. But for all the destruction that gets caused throughout this, rarely was it ever because of some attempt to get the ambulance to stop and it just went wrong. Like, it was difficult to feel the tension when you couldn't completely believe the events that were trying to build up the tension. And because of how long the chase gets dragged out, it brings this movie to a whopping 2 hours and 16 minutes. And not that you can't get away with a 2 hour plus movie based around a similar sort of concept, like Speed was a 2 hour movie and that's still great, but this was a story you can feel did not need to be over 2 hours. This needed to be like a tight 90 minutes with a much goofier tone right out of the gate. And then I think it would have achieved the effect it wanted. While I guess people aren't wrong with saying Ambulance is one of the better Michael Bay movies, it's still just an alright movie overall. While it's well directed, it has plenty of cool moments of action, and it has a fun scene-chewing Jake Gyllenhaal, I had a hard time loving it. Because at its heart it wanted you to take it seriously, it was sometimes difficult to buy some of the logic gaps needed to make the bloated 2 hour plus runtime go on for way longer than it needed to. So while there are enough entertaining moments that I still enjoyed it enough, I still wouldn't call it great. Ambulance gets a 6.5 out of 10. So let me know, did you see Ambulance or are you planning to see it and what were your thoughts? Is this one of your new favorite Michael Bay movies? Is it one of your new favorite Jake Gyllenhaal movies? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it. And for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone and keep having fun with film.